CNN national correspondent Bryn Gingras is at the scene for the US TV network. Yeah, I can tell you that, you know, I'm at the foot of the World Trade Center. It is lit up in red, white, and blue. And I'm also just a block away uh, from where this rental truck collided with a school bus and where this terror attack really ended. Um, I can actually still see the truck at the end uh, in the light of investigators. There are just swarms of police officers at the end of the street of where I am. I actually was, have been told just recently from sources of mine here on the scene that they had to extend the uh, crime scene even further because they came across some shell casings uh, of those bullets shot from police officers who, you know, apprehended the suspect. So we're talking about an enormous crime scene, yeah. uh, several blocks of New York City that is uh, still under heavy investigation at this point right now. With all those 9-11 resonances so strikingly, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just at the foot of where, you know, the reflection pools are, where the new One World Trade Center is. And certainly for people uh, who possibly lived here uh, during that time, it's, it, you know, it's really upsetting. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Everyone I've talked to, um, witnesses who have been on the scene or were on the scene at the time, law enforcement sources of mine that were there just minutes after and were walking along the West Side Highway uh, seeing bodies. Uh, everyone describes it the same way. They say it's just horror. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, think about it, this happening in other cities across the world. Um, these similar type attacks with trucks uh, mowing over people. And, you know, we've seen here in New York, the NYPD put up barricades around major areas like yeah. Times Square. But this is an area that, you know, people ride their bikes on. They commute to and from work this, this path. Um, and right across from it's a high school. You know, I talked to one teenager, a 17-year-old. She was leaving school. Her class had just been dismissed, and she heard the gunshots and ran back in, and she was barricaded in with her classmates until, you know, three hours later they weren't able uh, to leave. So it, there's just a lot of emotion right now. Um, I can tell you that this, it's Halloween night when this, when this happened. Um, Halloween parade here in New York City. It's a major parade. It happens every year, and it happened uh, – you know, it was scheduled to go on not far from where this crime scene is. And the city made it a point to continue that parade. And I think that's telling of how people are going to react is, is you know, we're resilient in this city and we're going to continue on. Bryn, we so appreciate you being with us. And we know that you have to go back to your proper work. Your real job was CNN. But can we ask you briefly about the suspect, this fellow, Sefulo Saipov, an Uzbeki national. Uh, he's been named in the sus as the suspect, uh, formerly by police. Uh, this letter that he reportedly left in the truck, what can you tell us about that? Yes, we know that he left a note inside that rental truck that he really rented just hours before this attack. Um, and in, on that note, it, it pledged allegiance to ISIS. Um, we know it was written in English. Uh, we also know from witnesses and law enforcement sources that he yelled Allah Akbar when he exited the vehicle. Um, so from the get-go, uh, law enforcement sources were telling us this was an act of terror, um, but trying to figure out if he was inspired uh, or actually working with a group um, is still being investigated. At this point, we, we do hear that he was acting alone, that there's no other threat uh, as part of this, uh, but still so many questions uh, about about who this Saipov is. And, uh, and the good news here that we don't always get to see in these terror attacks is that authorities were able to to apprehend him. And when they took him down, they shot him in the stomach. He's alive. He went through surgery, but he's alive. So you can be sure that he will be talking to investigators, or at least they'll be trying to. That's Bryn Gingras, who was at the scene for CNN.